Z Dog MD, Tech Crunch TV, Cyan Bannister Red Me. To all you tech VCs, I wipe you like VCs. I've been programming in logo since I was three on my Apple II E. But I took a vow of poverty, so I became an MD. Your entrepreneurs got more gold than folk Knox. Have a man servant to iron your socks. Put bagels up on your locks. And get your health care from concierge docs. Still, you don't know the difference between a cold and chicken pox. So check it out, though. Yo, listen to the ZTO double GMD. A gangster with a degree in medical pathology. My goals to entertain. Make you use your brain to explain why the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. So here's a topic of interest to you folk. Most think that it's a joke, but it'll make your booty smoke. Like the debate between iPhone and Droid. No fiber on your plate means you own some hemorrhoids. These little gremlins are engorged veins that get inflamed and cause itching and real pain. They can also bleed like stink. So if your TP's pink, put down your drink and start to think about what's causing them and how to start pausing them. Let's start with your meals and talk about the flaws in them. A low fiber diet means you're straining on the pot. So what you got is increased pressure on your roids. Your day is shot. Heavy lifting, lots of sit and make some worse. A curse that diet behavior may wreck. Fruits, vegetables, and lots of H2O Reduce the pressure down there, improve the fecal flow To learn more, go to ZDOLGMD.com My blog's the bomb, word to your mom So, what was the inspiration for ZDOG MD? You know, ever since, uh, ever since I was in college in the Nine Tray or 1993 uh, for the lay people, uh, there was Snoop Dogg. And I always loved Snoop Dogg's rapping. And so I used to tell my friends, yo, I'm Z Dogg. And then I uh, added the MD at the end when I became an MD and it was just something that stuck. You know, my inspiration for it really came from uh, my friend Tony Shea, who's the CEO of Zappos.com. And he's just a fantastic guy. And uh, my wife and I have known him for years and we, sort of stayed with him over Thanksgiving last year. And uh, he was right in the process of writing his book, Delivering Happiness. And I actually read an early manuscript and it just opened my eyes to, you know, uh, what it means to be happy in life and in work and in everything, in relationships. And Tony would ask me, hey, you know, are you happy doing what you're doing? And you know, what I do is I'm a, I'm a hospitalist. So I'm an internal medicine doctor that specializes only in inpatient hospital care. So uh, it's a very intense kind of a job. I really love it. Um, and what I love about it the most is the human interaction. So getting to really talk to people and, and, and make them feel at ease and, and educate them about their problems. And I have them there, they're a captive audience. So I can actually use humor, which I've used most of my life to try to get along and to cope with stress and things like that. I can sort of use that to, as a teaching and a healing sort of mechanism. And so Tony said, oh, are you happy doing what you're doing? And I said, well, I am, but I feel like uh, there's a big part of my personality that I can't really express you know, in the hospital. And uh, he said, well, what if you ideally had your way, what would you do? And I said, Psh, I'd be doing stand-up comedy, you know, on something like YouTube, and it would have a medical angle, and I'd be educating and uh, doing my thing. And he said, why don't you do that? And I, it actually never occurred to me that, hey, you can just go and do that. You know, it's got, the Internet's gotten to the stage now where you have a, a megaphone where you can actually, you know, broadcast all this great stuff. And so it seemed like a tremendous opportunity. And the, the great thing about Tony is he believed in that. He said, you know, that could really work. And he encouraged me to do it, and I just uh, got up and started doing it. Z Dog MD, Dr. Harry in the O One O, talking about the ills that'll chill the biggest mobster. So, what's the reaction He's been to your rap so far? Uh, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> it depends on who you're talking about. So, friends of mine that aren't in medicine and people on the internet really enjoy them, and, and it's very rewarding to me. Um, people at the clinic where I work, which is a large multi-specialty organization, and the academic center where I practice, some of them think it's fantastic. And some of them are just concerned, you know, are you crossing a line into unprofessional behavior? And to be honest, I feel very strongly about this. I don't think it's unprofessional to put a human face on medicine, to have a good time and to laugh, you know, to do something musical that's also educational that isn't, you know, crossing a line into inappropriate. I think it's actually what we need these days. What do you think of internet patients? You know, those patients that do all the research before they come to see you, and they're like, well, according to 57 mm. results on Google, this is what I have. 
Oh, you're giving me chest pain. Uh, just, you know, I think there's a lot of docs out there who, when they hear about those patients, or they hear they're coming to the, to the clinic or we see them in the hospital, people freeze up and panic because they know it's just going to take forever to try to sort through this. And I think, honestly, my feelings are a little mixed because I think it's, it's so fantastic that patients are empowered to do their own research and to come educated. But here's where the problem lies, and that is that the internet doesn't have a filter. It doesn't have a little uh, widget that you can put on Facebook that has four years of medical training plus residency that can filter and parse this information and, and clear it up for you and put it in context. So people come in terrified, and I've seen this, and there are some patients that I'm afraid to even tell things to because I know they're going to Google that word and they're going to panic. Um, so it's a mixed blessing. In some ways, it's great to have these educated folks, and in another way, it just means that much more work for the physician to try to parse all this disparate data that they've gotten that has no place in the context of what the patient is actually experiencing. Uh, and actually, to some extent, I feel like that's something I can contribute through these, you know, these videos. There's an educational component that's the driving undercurrent. And if we can sort of provide, like I noticed um, we did a wrap on, on ulcers and how ibuprofen, you know, Aleve, Naproxen, these kind of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories can cause ulcer disease. And I, you know, in medicine, we get blinded to the fact that, that everyone just doesn't know this stuff because we're around doctors all the time. And I talk to my friends who aren't physicians and they see the video and they're like, I had no idea that you could take Motrin and end up with, a, with an ulcer. And, you know, it, it's really rewarding to see what well, people are learning from this. And then you come to the blog and you get some context, you know, you talk to your doctor. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's tricky, but it can be navigated. So what do you, uh, what's your favorite technology? You know, right now, I, I feel like an Apple kind of fanboy, and, uh, and I guess to some extent I am because I always, I've always had Apple, even I've had an Apple IIe back in the day where I was programming in like assembly language. Um, but my favorite technology right now is just mobile, you know, the iPad, the iPhone. It just blows me away. And the medical applications that are developing now, you know, you can carry the thing on the wards. You pretty much have the world's information at your fingertips. Uh, and it's great because you can... It, None of us know everything. You know, this is the dirty little secret. I'm sure most people have figured it out, but doctors don't know everything. And now you can kind of sneak a little internet search while you're talking to a patient in, in the room and uh, be able to speak intelligently on something obscure, which is very, very nice, if they don't catch you. When they catch you, then you just tell them you were, you know, texting your friend, which goes over very well as well. I can imagine. <laughs> You know, I, the way I went into medicine, it was sort of a path of least resistance to some degree. I was good at science. I loved people, so it all worked into that. But if I were to do what I really loved, I'd be doing this with medicine wrapped around it. And so I'm so, I, you can ask my wife, I'm so much happier even just doing this for no money right now uh, and putting myself out there and getting the feedback that I get, either negative or positive. It's something that I love to do. And so you, really, you can't overestimate the importance to your personal happiness of doing what you love to do. And it's not work if you love to do it. You'll stay up till any hour and do it. And I think a lot of people have found that and a lot of people haven't. And particularly in medicine, there's a culture of unhappiness and bitterness. Some of the least happy people you'll ever find are in medicine. And I think it's because they feel that their job is so busy, they don't have time to do these other things. But the great thing about medicine is you can find your niche and you can actually do almost anything within it. And that's what I think is great about it. Z-Dog MD and Cyan Bannister. Yo, yo, I got one glove like Michael Jackson, but it's made of latex and it's your prostate I'm waxing. Z, D O double G M D, coming to educate the masses. I'm putting this thing straight up multiple asses. It's how I roll. I'm not getting. <laughs>